Welcome everyone. Uh, today's video is going to be uh, test casting the Aldebaran VFS, the 2022 version, with a variety of bass lures. I'll give you a little sneak peek of the lures uh, coming up here. But I'm going to be doing pitching, uh, like mid-range casting, long-range casting, also some skipping to make sure uh, that if you're in the market for a BFS reel, if the 2022 Aldebaran's for you. All right, so before I get started, I'll give you a rundown of the equipment that I'm using for this testing. Uh, the rod, this is that Dobbins uh, BFS rod that I've been using for quite a bit. It's the SUF 700C. It's a seven foot light powered rod. It's rated down to a 16th of an ounce. And then it's up to eight grams, which is uh, five sixteenths of an ounce. So it's pretty wide range. And it's uh, rated two to eight pound line. Uh, the line that I have on here, this is Verivis. This is their, uh, the renewed uh, bait finesse braid. It's a, it's a four strand braid. It's, it's a little bit tailored toward BFS uh, applications is being a little bit stiffer so you're not getting as many wind knots and those other complications and also it reduces dig-ins. I do have a leader on here I think this is a seven pound leader I'm not 100% sure. The lure that's a one tenth ounce uh, Z-Man head with a Z-Man tube on there so it's uh, this is going to simulate a lot of your Ned rigs that you're throwing uh, possibly some shaky heads I have a little bit uh, something different in the in the future for that. Uh, the brake setting all started at four. Um, if you, I'm going to skip a lot of the basic information because I covered that in my stream casting video, which would be my second Elderburn video. I'll put that link down below. All right. Side, the side play is set to, oh, wow. That was very smooth. I could turn the brakes down a little bit on that. That was just, just flicking it out there. That was Really nice distance. I'm not going to try to fish right now. Chance of me actually catching a fish is pretty low. But wow, that is insane. Very flat casting. A lot like it was in the stream, but it's just a bass lure with a bass rod. It's going to do like a random little pitch. Ooh. That thing is fast for pitching. That's nice. All right, so one thing that I've noticed, oh, wow, that's nuts. So the biggest thing, uh, especially even with like the Shimano BFS reels, like the, the Conquest, or mo mo mostly for me, it would be like the, the Corrado, for example. I've, I did a lot of bass fishing with that, is if I'm pitching, I turn my brakes down a little bit, you know, kind of normal, and then if I want to cast, I have to turn my brake dial uh, up to be able to cast and it's kind of that back and forth that I have to do unless I'm compromising in the middle that I'm just kind of restricting myself on both ends but so far like going short range it's very flat and it's controlled still and then you know say if a bass surfaces up or you know there's a I'm, I'm pitching docks here then I go to cast on like some weed lines that can just let into a cast and there's no no loose line and that's it was right over by that rock which is about I don't know, probably 25 yards or so, and that's just one hand flicking it out there. The retrieve, even with braid, it feels really smooth. Uh, I have a different lure that I'll be using for that. Yeah, it's super low trajectory. You know what? I was gonna save this for a little bit later, but I might try a couple skips. I will turn my brakes up. I'm not, uh, I'm not that crazy. Just turn my brakes up a little bit for it. That was first first attempt skipping with this reel. Uh, I actually did not skip much with the Aldebaran, so I can't compare it to that, but the Corrado BFS really surprised me for skipping too. Man. Okay. Uh, even with the even with the Alphas Air TW, which I have some experience bass fishing with, I actually haven't really bass fished with it all that much. Uh, I'm gonna transition to some pitches. It was, even Daiwa SV was not that easy. I mean, it is easy with the Daiwa SV system, but. All right, now I'm gonna try some pitching with this uh, same Ned rig. I mean, I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time doing this because it, it does feel really nice. Yeah, I mean, if you're pitching docks, whatever, that's, I don't even wanna, I mean, I don't really have to spend that much time on it. Then, you still get some pretty long casts. No backlash, nothing like that.
All right, so for the lures today that I'm gonna be using, uh, Ned Rig, this one tenth ounce head with a Z-Man tubes. I have the Jackal Micro Tappy. That can be kind of hard to cast sometimes. This is a Papinka Frog, a Bay Finesse Empire carries, I think all of these lures. Uh, this is a this is a Reigns, uh, I forget, I'll, I'll put the link down below to it. I forget, it's some sort of craw, two and a half inches. This is a Verivis hook, it's a, it's a size three extra wide gap hook. The rockfish hook that's a little two and a half gram weight on there i'll go over that in a little bit all right so now i'm going to uh, cast that micro tappy it, it's got a lot of appendages on there it, it doesn't cast terribly but it does it can be a little bit awkward to cast so i'll just keep my brake setting on four like i had it with that ned rig and let's see all right i got some backlash there and it gradually happened i don't know if the camera could pick that up <clears throat> oh, I just turned my brakes down. <clears throat> that would have been bad. Turn, turn my brakes down. Well, this is kind of this is going to test that retrieve because it is a it is a wide body lure and it has a lot of resistance because the the blade and that little club thing on the back of it. I mean, even with braided line, where you're going to get a lot more feedback, it's it feels really nice the retrieve. All right. It feels a little too restricted. I mean, I cast like thumbs free. There, I'll turn it like just over four on the brake dial. I don't know why I'm sitting there acting like I'm gonna fish with this thing. Oh, the big steelhead grabs that thing. I mean, that's a that's pretty good distance. You're not gonna really try to get more than that. I'm, I'm gonna have to fish the, the Gekabesian again and see if I can get better distance with the Gekabesian. Or I could look back at that uh, other video I did. It had the same line on there, same rod. I don't remember if I cast this or not. I just remember that Papinka frog flying through there. It's kind of hanging up in the air a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna try to get some maximum distance. Uh, this is that Papinka frog. Uh, I think I said in my last video with it, which is a Gekabesian, it looks kind of like the little cat bus thing off of My Neighbor Totoro. That's what it always reminds me of. But this thing does cast pretty far. It's actually a really good micro frog uh, option if you're looking for like a downsized frog bite. Cast pretty good. I can't, can't draw any conclusions yet. But the Gekabesian, I know it just absolutely launched this lure. Without, and there was, there was some crosswind if I remember. Ooh. I mean, that's, that's a lot of the line off there. That's why I wish I had that XG. See, I'm wasting, your, I'm wasting the viewer's time right now by having the HG instead of the XG. I mean, that's some good distance. I. I definitely need more tests. I know that, that question is going to come up about casting distance. I'd say all like for an all-around reel, uh, if you if you want to compare the Daiwa Silver Creek to the Gekabesian, this definitely takes the cake as an all-around reel. Maybe the Gekabesian gets slightly more distance, uh, maybe with a little bit heavier lures too, but to be able to fish streams really well and to be able to get distance with the same exact reel, uh, definitely the, the Elderberon is the way to go. I can tell you one thing, this rain's craw, definitely, it smells like fish would like it, that's all I could say. It actually, it's like a little Texas rig that's set up, and then it has a, a clipping weight on there, so if I want to take the weight off, or if I want to put a different weight on there, I can. This one's two and a half grams, uh, these, are, these are available at Bay Finesse Empire, and also uh, the Veravis America website as well. So this test is going to do, I'm going to be pitching this, uh, there's some wood that's down here, um, some submerged wood and some uh, wood that's coming out of the water as well. It's going to be able to test my accuracy and also that trajectory, the control. If you watch my, actually, you'll see in a future video when I put the Elderberry BFS against the Alphas ARTW, I have some surprising results uh, with pitching for that. Well, that feels nice. I mean, definitely it's fast. I'm kind of testing this rig out too. I mean, yeah, I can, 
I can put that right in there. I'm gonna try I'm gonna go to a longer pitch to the front of it. All right now I'm gonna try a distance cast across the river. There's no fluff, I didn't feel any fluff or anything like that. And that's that's pretty good distance. Like you're not really gonna fish one of these rigs. I mean I could probably cast farther if I put more effort into it and change my bricks maybe. That's that is a that's a distance that you're gonna cast a, a finesse rig like this. Uh, especially if you're using lighter fluorocarbon or something. And even like short range casting, I mean that still feels nice too. If I'm if I'm fishing around weed edges or docks or you know whatever it is, I can I don't have to touch my breakdown. That stay, still stays low with that backhand cast. It's really nice. All right, now what I'm going to do. All right, so now I'm gonna take this weight off. Kind of my first time doing this. I kind of, it's good that it stays on there. But so what I'm gonna do is just kind of put it sideways and use the hook as leverage, I think. There we go. That yeah, wasn't bad. So now this is gonna test uh, some, some of that control. I'm going to start with some, ooh, let me fix that, plastic first. But I'm going to start with some uh, distance casting first, just get calibrated a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, do some pitching as well. There we go. That hook berry is in there pretty good. Okay. Oh, that's nice looking. Slight little drop. Pretty. If you, let me turn my brakes down a little If you're looking to cast weightless plastic, especially a small one like this, any further, then you're just being greedy at that point, really. That's, that feels really nice. It's flat control, but my brakes are on, I don't know, about 3.8, if you wanna look at it that way. I mean, that's just really nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a little bit more. There's just some short range casting. Now I'm gonna, now I'm going to try a little bit of pitching. Yeah, that's nice. I say in this regard, even better than the uh, the Gekabijan. I like the Gekabijan for weightless plastics, but this is this is feeling really nice. The pitching, I can feather that down with my thumb. It's takes a little bit more, it takes a little bit more uh, finessing with your thumb in order to get that soft presentation. Like the Daiwa air brakes would do really good on the back end of pitching to not spook fish or, you know, have your lure slammed on too hard, but that's nice. All right, so now this is gonna test uh, a little bit of the control. Uh, there's not much wind. I was hoping that there'd be a little bit more wind, which is kind of odd when you're fishing, but uh, this is the Imakatsu iAero 65 SP. So it's a suspending bait. It's kind of like a jerk bait. Uh, it doesn't have a lip on there. And it has the one single treble hook. So this is gonna test uh, the, also the line stacking ability. I'm gonna jerk this thing around. Uh, and then a lot of times what can happen is that the when you're picking up your loose line, it can create issues in loose line on your spool. And then when you go to cast, you can backlash. So I'm gonna move a little bit. Let me turn my camera down. I'm just gonna try to purposely pick up some loose line. That's a nice action. It just sits there very slowly. I mean, that's no thumb. That's no thumb. And that's that's pretty good distance. And I think this lure weighs, I'll put the weight right here, but I think it weighs like one third of an ounce, if I remember correctly. There's something really odd like that. But there's no weight transfer system. There's nothing like that in, in this lure. So it is at the mercy of the wind and everything else. Oh, don't get snagged. Don't get snagged. There's a log sitting there. I didn't want to get snagged. But even with that kind of awkward cast, still very controlled. I'm going to turn the brakes down because that's how I am. I'm just going to kind of work this back really sloppy for that line control. Which... 
the the line guide's the same shape as the Alder Baron and everything, so I'm not, I'm not really going to be too too worried about that. <laughs> Almost got negative distance on that cast. Definitely was uh, not liking that harder cast. Oh, it's oh, that really wasn't that bad of a backlash. Uh oh. What am I hooked on? Fishing line. All right, so um, I'd say overall, I mean, now that I got some stream fishing with the reel and also a little bit of you know, fishing some bass lures, uh, very capable reel. I think out of all of the recent BFS reels, so I'm counting all the Daiwa ones, like the Daiwa Alpha's Air, even the Steez Air going up to this. Uh, I'd, I'd say this is the most versatile. Uh, the Alpha's Air is pretty versatile too. Uh, had had some perks, which you see in a future video, over the Aldebaran, at least in my hands. But and this, they're all the same price. Uh, the Steez Air is more expensive, of course, but all those Daiwa reels I was talking about and the Aldebaran, all around the same price. And I think this is a really good performing reel. Uh, I do want to get a little bit more distance casting, uh, just so I can compare it to the Gekabishan in that manner. Uh, I do think it's it has more potential for short range versus the Silver Creek. The Silver Creek is just, it's a little bit, a little bit more consistent and it does have a little bit more breaking on that back end of your cast. So if your soft presentation is really important, that, that could be a factor. Uh, but I do think Shimano did the right thing by waiting and making, making all the adjustments they needed to, to release this reel especially with a lot of the Zyra reels, uh, giving Shimano a lot of competition. But I really like this spool. Hopefully they carry this on into future uh, reels. And if you want to see more BFS content, make sure you subscribe and comment down below what else you want to see.